Hey guys, I got another scamp project that I'm working on today. Um, in this video, we are going to start making the cabinet doors. Um, the previous owner made a shaker style cabinet door. I guess he was just trying to save weight, um, but the doors were so thin that the screws he used popped through the face of the doors. And uh, I, I just don't like the way it looks. I could probably fix it, but honestly, um, I have most of the wood that I need to make the cabinet doors and it's just going to be a lot of labor involved to, to make these things. So you will see that it does take me a long time to get this project finished. Uh, I started and then about halfway through with the painting, I actually set the project to the side, didn't touch it for months. I don't even know how long it was and then finally came back to the, the cabinet doors to finish them up. Uh, so today we're, we're gonna get started on, on cutting these new doors. Okay, so I've obviously already cut some of them um, and I'm marking all of them on the back side what size the door is going to be. I've got my little sketch of the layout here so I know I've got a list of all the sizes that I need to make. So right now I'm doing this 10 by 16 so now I'm going to measure for the 16. So these are 10 and now to measure the other piece so it is 16 but that includes the the width of these and then you also have to add a three quarter inch so i measured from here to 16 and three quarter and i'm going to cut that next you can see this board back here uh that's just scrap um, that's gonna have to be cut off anyway. So I'm putting that board back behind. That way whenever the saw goes through the back side of this, it doesn't blow that out. Um, otherwise, it'll get really chipped up like this right here. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so if you put a board behind it, a scrap piece of wood behind it, it'll minimize that. Should be 15 and 3 quarter.
So I've already finished this one completely and this one. Those are kind of my test pieces. So those are done and I've already cut this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So I have these three, they're all exactly the same. These are drawers um, and they're 12 by 16. So I need to cut three of those and then this side of the trailer is finished. You can kind of see that's what I was trying to avoid. So that's why I put this block behind it. And now when I cut that, well, this is the one I just cut. It's nice and clean on both sides. Okay, so I have half of them cut. Um, and the way that I organize them is the top two these are the rails and <clears throat> the bottom two those are the styles so these are the ones where you need to cut the uh, the ends and form the uh, tongue and then you also have to have the groove on one side of each and then on these the styles you only cut the groove. So that's how I organized all of them. Um, I'm gonna set up the router table to cut the tongues on all of these and I'll cut the tongues on every single piece. Um, oh, I'm missing a piece somewhere. Hopefully I didn't cut it. Anyway, uh, and then this one back here is stacked too high. So it actually goes like that. And I need to find this piece. So let me find that. Um, and then I'll go set up the router table and start cutting the tongue for all of these pieces. Oh, maybe that's it. That is not it. I'll find it. Okay, I found it. So first thing I'm gonna do, I've already, I've already made two doors. And so I have a test piece that I've already, <clears throat> uh, I've already made as well. And so you can do this from scratch and it's not really all that difficult, but um, since I've already done it, um, I want it to at least, look like the other two that I've made so I am just going to set this up close to the test piece that I've already done okay so this is the the bit for cutting the tongue and you have to take the feather board off That's pretty close. So now, um, with my router, I don't actually have a router lift, but with this router table and router combo, um, there's a little tool that you can adjust the height. Um, or you can do it from inside the cabinet, which I don't see the, the tool, so, oh, there it is. Um, I can adjust the height of my router bit with this. You just unlock the router down there. And it needs to go down a little more. I'm just going to reach inside because there's a little knob in here.
Okay, so <clears throat> to to get this set up, what? Uh, which I just did that incorrectly. Um, you cut with the face side down, and then you want about an eighth of an inch in that that material in the back. Um, so. Uh, you could do this on the table and just slide it through. Uh, if it's a little bit longer, you'd probably use a miter gauge. Um, so, you know, if it was like this length right here, you could use a miter gauge and slide it through like that. Um, using this sled is just a little less dangerous. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. It's easiest to cut the tongue first and then match the the groove to the tongue <clears throat> so that's what i'm going to do all right so we have the height set now um now if you didn't already have that test piece what you would do is take a new piece of scrap put it right there go ahead and clamp it down and then line up your bit and then you would need to measure from the top of this corner right here to the bottom edge of that blade right there and make sure that it's a quarter inch. So we'll test that in just a second. Um, there is a bearing in here that the workpiece will ride on. So now we want to set the fence and it's actually pretty close already. Uh, you can see it's rocking just a little bit. So I'm going to Pull it forward just a hair. Okay, it's still riding on the bearing. I can see the bearing move when I slide this across. Um, make sure the fence is not in the way. These fin the fence is adjustable also. You can loosen these up back here and adjust the size of the fence, the, uh, the gap in the fence, so it's clearing. Alright, everything looks good. Go ahead and Set the sled up there. Make sure your your workpiece is the sled is all the way against the fence, and then push your workpiece all the way against the fence. Clamp it down and then plug it back in. And this gets pretty noisy. our test piece you should have just a tiny tiny bit of wood that you need to sand off of each side and um, however much you have on this side it should be about the same on this side
Yeah, it's probably about a 30 second off. Um, now I'm not gonna mix up these pieces with stuff that I've already done or stuff that I'm gonna do in the future. Um, I'm keeping all of, everything together, so it should be fine. There's a, you know, there's a pretty good, it fits, it fits pretty well. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm gonna, I'll keep this for a, a, a test piece for the ones that I'm about to make. Um, so now that I have this, when I go to cut the groove in all of them, I'm going to put this piece through there with the bit that cuts the groove. And um, I will line up the, the next bit to cut the groove with this test piece here. Um, I may cheat and use that one to get it close, but um, I will have to cut a few grooves in this to to get it um where it's exactly perfect um and so just so i have more than one option uh, i'm gonna go ahead and cut the other side as well Yeah, it's pretty good. This is what we're going to go with. All right, so I'm going to go grab all those pieces and cut all of them. Okay, so this is where the writing comes in. This is the back, so you put the face down. Put my sled all the way against the fence, put the work piece against the fence. Go ahead and tighten everything up. tongues so I'm done with the sled for now. <clears throat> now it's time to set up the router table to cut all the grooves. You don't necessarily have to move the fence to do this but it does make it easier. What I'm doing now is I am lining up the tongue with this part of the bit right here, which is what cuts the groove. Um, make sure that the back side is up, which this is the back side because you can see this is squared off and there's only eighth inch. This angle cut right here, that's the face. So with the face down, 
line that up and it looks like it needs to go down just a hair whoops wrong way that looks pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and lock the router down and make a test cut so pull all this off <clears throat> put on some feather boards and plug it back in and do our first test piece. Okay, here's one that we just cut, and um, that's that's about perfect. I'm I'm not gonna get it any closer than that. So hopefully I lock that. Yeah. So we're ready to cut all of these. It's a really good fit. So that's my test. And I am going to write on the back. Uh, so let's cut some grooves. Just remember to put the face down. I'm going to show you guys how to assemble one of these um, and I'll, I'll put together this one right here because it's already been sanded but let me show you what I'm sanding so right here um, once you run that through the router you'll have to clean that up a little bit so I'm just going to take the sandpaper sand it until all those little pieces that are hanging off there are gone on both sides and on each end there's a tongue on each end of these and then I'm gonna go ahead and sand this edge also because it's gonna be a little harder to sand once it's all together 
and that one is ready to assemble. Then we'll take our wood glue and I'm just gonna put it on the tongue um, on every single edge of this tongue right here. So you've got uh, one, two, three, four, five edges on a tongue. So I'm putting glue on all five of those. You can use a brush to kind of spread the glue around if you want to. Um, I probably won't. Sometimes I do, depending on what I'm gluing up. Uh, that's such a small area. I'm not, I'm not going to do it for this. Uh, I've got enough on there where that glue is, is actually going to squeeze out once I uh, put the clamps on. Make sure you don't miss any. I haven't been doing much woodworking lately. So my wood glue is actually getting dried out in this bottle. Um, maybe I didn't have it sealed well enough, I'm not sure. I feel like I did. Uh, but anyway, it's drying out a little bit. Um, luckily I'm getting to the end of this bottle and uh, Once I get rid of most of the glue out of that bottle, um, I have a I have a big gallon jug that I'll refill that with, and so I'll put some fresh glue in there for that. Perfect. Wipe the excess glue off. And it's done. Now I just have, I don't know, 10 doors left to do. So next I will let this dry for at least 30 minutes, but um, typically I'm just doing this in my spare time. So usually I'll clamp it up at the end of the day and then tomorrow I'll come back in here at some point and um, take them out of the clamps. And then you can see I have a stack back there. That's all of them that I've already finished. Here's a close up, I guess. It's all glued. And um, as soon as it dries, it'll be ready for sanding and painting. And then um, these are all finished over here. Okay, I'm gl gluing up the last few. Um, there's two that are currently being glued, and then I have two left over here. So um, <clears throat> while I'm waiting on those to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start on the next step. Um, this you don't have to do, 
and there's different ways to fix this problem but um the quarter inch plywood here is not exactly a quarter inch so um you can always cut a panel <clears throat> out of like solid material and make it fit that groove exactly but um i don't want that gap right there um, and i especially don't want to paint it with the gap closed like this and then eventually that paint's gonna crack right there in that seam um, and I also don't want it rattling around either uh, but it does need this does actually need to be slightly smaller than the groove that you cut all the way around uh, because you need the wood to be able to expand and contract so that uh, and you can't glue it either um, because you need it to be able to expand and contract. So what I'm going to do is shoot a couple of either, you could either use brad nails or staples. I happen to have staples. So I'm gonna push it towards the front of the cabinet. And I'll probably put three since this door is a little bigger. I just wanna make sure you don't come out the face because then this thing is trash. So I'm trying to get right into that corner and I'm shooting them in at an angle. Super nervous doing this. That one's finished, uh, but like just one slightly wrong position of that staple, and this thing is ruined. I could fix it with some wood filler and sandpaper, but I don't want I don't want to fix it. So. All right, I'm gonna do the rest of them. That's it for this one. Uh, I won't bore you guys with any more. Um, I've got, I think, I think I have 18 of these to do. So um, this one's pretty much finished. Uh, just.
just need to paint it and install it and it's this project's done so thank you guys so much for watching